Ahoy! In this video series I will show you how to set up this particle system and how to set up the whole scene with the fog and so on. And then I will show you how to create this short movie clip in Sequencer and how to render it with Movie Render Queue. And in the end I will show you how to create a video out of the images that were created with Movie Render Queue. Okay, let's start. I assume that you already installed Unreal Engine 5, so at the beginning we just have to create a new project. For this it's enough to go to Film and Video Live Events and select a new blank project. Make sure that you select it, uh, you start a content because we need a few materials and stuff from the starter content. And let's call it Particles Tutorial. Okay, let's create it. Okay, this is how it looks. Let's start from the beginning. At first, we want to create a new particle system. For that, we go to uh, Content Drawer, and in Content, we just click right click here and click on New Niagara System. Here, we select the first option, and here we want to use an empty emitter. Click on empty emitter, click on plus, and that's it. Let's call it Particles. Okay, to edit it, we just double click on it, and this is how it looks like. Here on the left side, you see uh, the preview of the particle system, and here you see the um, settings for the particle system itself. Okay, let's create the flock. And first, we go to Properties, click on it, and change the SIM target from CPU to GPU because we will later spawn many, many particles and GPU particles are in this case a better option. And we have to click here on fixed bounds. I usually like to increase the bound region. In this way, the particle system stays longer active even though you don't really look at it. This solves a, a little bit of glitching here and there. So I would recommend to do this. Okay. This was the first step. The second step is to spawn particles. We do this by clicking on emitter update on the small plus and click on spawn rate. The spawn rate is the amount of particles per second. So if we add a one here, then one particle per second is spawned. However, we don't want to spawn the little sprites, this round sprites, we want to spawn those long cubes. How do we do that? By deselecting the sprite renderer and adding a mesh renderer. And in the mesh renderer, we can say, oh, please spawn um, for each particle a box. And we do that by clicking here at meshes. And here we can select a mesh. I would like to spawn a cube. We can use the cube from uh, Unreal Engine or you can import another cube or create a cube with the mesh editor. But the normal cube here is totally enough. Click on it. And now you should already see here on the left side, a new cube is now getting spawned every second. I don't like the material. Let's change the material. Here we click on the material override. Click on the plus to add a new material. Click on here and let's select a metal-like material. So let's go metal. Let's take this base gray metal. Click on it. Okay, now our cube is metal-like. Very good. Okay, at the moment every second a new cube is being, being spawned. Our goal is now to create many cubes and these cubes should have some movement. You see at the moment the cube is just a normal cube. I would like to change its shape a little bit. We do that by going to Initialize Particle. And here at Mesh Attributes, we can go to Mesh Scale Mode and select Non-Uniform. Now we can change the scale of the mesh. So if we, for example, set here 0.5, and here 0.1 and 
and take a look at the mesh again. Now we see that the mesh, our cube is now quite long and this is what we want. Okay, now let's move the particles like in the video. We achieve that by adding a force. By going to particle update, click on the plus and then we have to go to forces and there we need the curl noise force. If we just click on it, then we see nothing because here at the right side, it says to us we should solve um, the forces and velocity. So we just click on fix issue. And now this thing got added. And now if we take a look, our cubes are moving. That's already a good first step. In order to make it more interesting, we just increase the noise strength to maybe like 500. And the noise frequency we decrease to like 0 0.0. Let's zoom a little bit out, take a look. Okay, this is already quite nice. So they move now in a way. So now we have several problems. In the video, we saw that the cubes faced into the direction of movement. We fix that by going into mesh renderer. And then we go to on the top to facing mode and we click from default to velocity. And now the cubes always face into the direction where the current velocity vector points to. This is quite nice. Okay, let's increase the spawn rate a little bit so that we have a, a, a better picture of everything. And we see the particles all follow the identical path. This we also don't wanna. We want that the noise changes over time and we achieve this by going to curl noise force. We click here on pan noise field. And if we add here a value to all of those, then the noise field is being changed over time. And so the particles don't follow all the same path. And you see now it's more random. Okay, so let's increase the size here a little bit so we have a better view on the whole situation. So the next problem we have to solve is I don't want that all the particles start at the center. Doesn't make nice uh, figures. So how about we let the particles spawn within a sphere? We do that by going to uh, particle spawn and go to here and click on shape location. You already see that it changed. Now they're spawning randomly within a sphere, which is already quite nice. Let's increase the size of the sphere a little bit. Let's put it to a thousand. Zoom out a little bit. So let's take a look how it looks when we increase the spawn rate. Let's set it to a thousand. Just wait a second. So if we compare it now with the result that we want, we see that the particles seem to spread quite much. In the video, they sticked more together. And we can achieve the sticking together by adding drag. And we do that by going here to particle update, click on plus, and just enter drag. And if we add that, then you already see a little bit that they stick more closely together. Now let's tweak a little bit here and there. First, we increase the drag a little bit more to like three. And then we go to curl noise force and increase it more like to 2000 or so. How does it look like? This looks already better. Yes. However, I would like that it also turns a little bit over time, the whole structure. I achieved this by adding a vortex force. A vortex force is basically a thing that creates a twister or a tornado. We do that by going here to particle update and add a vortex force. Let's put the vortex force before the drag and the vortex force, uh, let's just put it to a thousand or so. Here we can select around which axis it should turn. The set axis is okay, this is what we want. It's already looking a little bit better. So the next problem is those particles tend to vanish too early. We can change their lifetime by going to initialize particle. And here we have the lifetime setting. Let's set it to 20 seconds. And now all the cubes will stay alive for 20 seconds. What I don't like at the moment, they're still not sticky enough. So I increase the drag to five. 
and I increase the curl noise to 4000 or so. So let's see. And now a new thing which I also don't like is we see that the cubes just spawn out of nothing immediately. How about we let them increase their size when they are getting uh, spawned? We just let them grow a little bit and when they die, we let them shrink. Let's do that by going to particle update and then we click on the plus and go to scale mesh size. And by adding that, we can define how the scale should behave over their lifetime. We do that by going here to scale factor, click on this small symbol. And now we go, we enter curve, we select vector from curve. Let's take a look here. Uh, this is the lifetime. Here is the lifetime displayed. Zero is the start from the particle and one is the, the end of the lifetime. In our case, it's 20 seconds. The y-axis is the current size of the particle. So this means at the beginning, at birth, the particle has 100% um, size and over time it decreases to 0% size. Let's take a look how it looks at the left side. If we take a look at the particles here on the left, you see how they get smaller and smaller and then they vanish in the end. However, we wanted to let it grow at the beginning and let it shrink at the end. So the curve should look somehow like, like this. In order to achieve this curve, we have to do two things. First, we change the type of those two keyframes. And second, we have to insert two additional keyframes so we can easily build this curve. Okay, we achieve this by first select everything. We click in here and then control A. Now we selected both keyframes and now we click right click on it and we click on auto. Okay, now we have to add two keyframes by going here to right click and go to add key. And then we click again, right click, add key. We select those two, right click, auto. Now we have four keyframes and now we just have to rearrange them. So first we select the first one and we can enter the time and the location here by hand. Key data is the time, so this stays at zero. And at zero it should have the value zero because we want that the size is at zero start. Okay, this keyframe, let's put it at 0 0.1. So after a tenth of the lifetime, we want that the cube is 100% size. Okay, next one is, let's move this keyframe to the right. Let's put it to 0 0.9 and to one. And if we take a look at the left, we see that the particles start very small and then later they will get very small again. So we created a particle system, added a curl force and said that we would like to spawn meshes. And also we added a drag force, so the particles tend to stick together. And we added a vortex force, so everything has an additional twist. Okay, let's save the thing and create the scene. So I just minimize it and I'm going back to here. You see here this message. We can get rid of it by disabling texture streaming. Let's do it by going to project settings and enter texture. And here you see the option texture streaming. Let's click here. Texture streaming is only important if you want to create a game or something. But for our purpose, we would like to just create a small video so we don't have to take care of texture budget and so on. Okay, let's create the scene. First, we delete everything, click on it and hit the delete key. Yes, we would like to delete everything. Here on the right side, you see all the elements that are in the scene. Click on it and just delete it. Now we have an empty space. First, let there be light. We go to this small symbol on top and then go to lights and we add a directional light. You just take it and drag it into the scene. Now we have the light. Uh, the next thing that we want, we just add our swarm. We go here to the content drawer and here's our particles. 
we just drag it into the scene just put it here and we see it automatically starts let's zoom out a little bit and it seems to work already in a way if you hold down the right control key and l key then you can change the orientation of the directional light let's put the directional light somewhere at the front a little bit down that's fine okay next is if we take a close look to the particles quickly for demonstration purposes i add us i add a cube if i move this cube down to the in into the particles and take a look at the cube then you see that the particles don't cast a shadow at the moment and this we would like to change for that we click on our particles and here on the right side we can change the settings in order for them to cast the shadow we just click at lighting we click the cast shadow option and then if we take a look again and now you see that the particles now cast a nice shadow perfect let's delete this guy again this looks already quite nice do you remember the video in the video there was additionally some fog and some light inside here and some light rays so in order to achieve everything we just have to add two additional things first we add the fog we go here to this thing and then go to visual effects and here we use the exponential height fog we just drag it inside our scene and we see nothing happened at least nothing that we immediately see if we increase the fog density to one aha now something happened however i set it back to the original value i would like to have the same effect like in the video to achieve this we have to enable volumetric fog for that we select our exponential height fog and go to search and just enter volumetric and then you see here volumetric fog we just activate this it's already starting to look okay and now let's add the red light that i showed you in the video for that we go here to the plus and go to lights and add a point light let's just put it here i would like to put this point light at the position of the particle system for that we just check where the particle system is located so click on particles delete here our volume search and the particle system is located at this position let's just put it at zero 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 then it's easier to find and now we just just put our point light at the same position click on the point light and add at the location zero 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 okay now the point light is where the particle system origin is perfect however we don't really see the light yet for that let's set up the light a little bit so activate the point light first we would like to increase its intensity let's just put it to 10,000. and you saw that something if i reset it okay something is happening but you already see that the light is still too locally limited we can change it by increasing the attenuation radius let's set 20,000 here and now you already see great the light shines now so we would like to have a red light let's change it to red by clicking on light color and then just select a reddish light okay so that's already an okay beginning however remember the video we wanted to have nice light rays and we can achieve this by changing the point light into a volumetric light we go to point light click here and enter and search for volumetric and click here activate this and now you should already see the light rays this already looks promising however you see that the whole scenery seems to be a little bit too bright we can change it by going to directional light and decrease its light intensity a little bit put it to like 0.3 now we have it quite mystical 
light let's increase it to one maybe for me i feel it's not foggy enough i want to have more fog let's go to exponential height fog check what happens when we increase the fog density okay now it's getting better however you see that uh, that the volumetric fog so this this cloudy stuff it disappears after a while after a certain distance to the um to our light i want to increase this distance for that we just go down to volumetric fog and here at few distance we can increase it a little bit let's just put it to twenty thousand. ah okay now it's getting better so now this this looks much better Okay. Remember back the video, I don't want, for example, I don't like the fog color. There are two ways to change the fog color. One way is to change here the albedo color, because the fog color is now determined by the volumetric fog. So if we change this color, then the main color will change. So I can show you. We go here to blue, then you see the fog changes to blue. However, I don't want to change it this way. The other way is to change the color of the directional light because the directional light is creating this milky color at the moment. So if we change the directional light color, then the fog color will automatically change. So we go to directional light and then we go to up to the light color. Click on here and select a bluish and you see how the color changes. Let's just select like this. This whole thing looks already quite promising. And it has a nice long shadow. For me, this light, this point light is a little bit too strong for my taste. Let's increase its intensity a little bit, like get it to 2000 maybe. So I still think the directional light, the whole scene is too bright. Let's decrease the amount that the directional light influences the volumetric box scattering. We change it by decreasing this value. Let's set it to 0.2. And now you see that the directional light, the big light, now adds much less light to our volumetric fog. And now this whole thing looks much more mystical and it still has a nice glow from our directional light. So I would say this is now quite okay-ish. I would increase maybe to 0 0.3. Yes, this looks good. And in the exponential height fog, I would like to tweak the volumetric settings by changing the scattering distribution. So you see, if I change this, let's make it to the right. Then you see that our directional light gets quite a highlight. And here in the back, it's now pitch black. So, and if I change it to minus, then you see that suddenly at the other side, it's getting bright. Whereas where the directional light is, it's not completely dark. So what I want is that at the directional light position, there is a little bit glow. Yes, there is a little bit direction. And at the back, it's more dark. This looks now quite nice. For my taste, it's now a little bit too much fog. So you already see that it's a little bit um, drying out, changing here and there. Let's break it to 0 0.1. Oh yeah. The next thing, do you remember in the video, there was uh, this fog layer at the bottom and I would like to recreate that. We can easily change it by going to fog height fall off. And if we go up, then the fog suddenly is only distributed at the bottom and at the top, there is no fog suddenly. And what happens if we change the height of the fog? So this is our fog. If we change the position of the fog, you see that this, uh, that the whole fog changes position. So let's just set it that 
the fog border is somewhere here at, at the particle system origin. Let's take a look a little bit. Oh, I still feel that it's a little bit too high. Okay. But now we have the problem that here is basically black. We could add, for example, now an atmosphere in order to give here a sky, but I would like to just add basically a second fog layer. And luckily in the exponential height fog, we can add a second fog by just expanding here and increasing here this fog density. If we ch I just increase it, and now you already see, if I decrease it, increase, you see that here comes additionally a fog. If we now change the fog height fall off to a smaller number, then you see now we have something like in the video. At least we are getting there. I would like to now change the position of the directional light a little bit. Again, Control L. And with the mouse, I can change the position of the directional light a little bit. Let's put it a little bit down. Okay. And do you see what I see? If I go back, you see how the fog also vanishes. This is something that I also don't like. Let's increase the fog distance. We go here again to exponential height fog. And now we just search for distance. And here at volumetric fog view distance, so the 20,000 was still not enough. Let's just take 200,000. And now the fog is quite nice and quite far. And now we just have to tweak a little bit here and there in order to get a nice picture. This color bending I don't like. Let's try to fix it by tweaking the exponential fog a little bit here and there. Let's see what happens here. Uh -huh. So we just changed the second fog data fall off value a little bit. I would say it's acceptable. Let's move the fog a little bit down. So. And now we have the uh, a relatively nice effect that the particles sink down into the fog and we have also a light that creates nice rays. I will increase the red light a little bit. Okay. And I can increase also the source radius a little bit. In this way the point light is not only starting from a single point but starts from a sphere. In this way everything gets a little bit brighter. It's like 2000. Okay. If we take a look, well, it's it's okay now. You can play around till you like the image. And then we take the next step by adding an additional particle system. Because now, you see when I move, that we don't have anchor points where our eyes easily see that we move. So we should add some orientation points, something where we see that it's moving and we do that by just adding another particle system that spawns small floating particles in the scene. And we don't have to create it from scratch because Unreal already has this kind of thing. We just go now to Content Browser, click here and create a new Niagara system. Uh, we create a new one from selected images. Select. We select this hanging particles click on the plus, click on finish. And now we just add it to the project. If we take a close look at it, you see that the particles are only spawned in this small region. And this is totally too small for our scenery. So what we do now, we first put it back to the, to the center. And now we just increase its size. We here go to scale and let's enter a thousand. Zoom back a little bit. Because we still have selected the floating particles, we see yellow the single particles. And we see, okay, if I move, they are there. It's It already looks okay, but I feel that there are too 
new particles. So we change it by increasing the spawn rate. For that, we have to open the particle system, double click, and you see already here spawn rate, click on it. First, let's use 200, enter. So you see here the preview, more are cr being created. And because I think we will spawn quite many particles, let's change it from CPU particle to GPU particle. We have to select fixed bounds again. And I want to increase the boundaries. Okay, let's save it and take a look. How do they look if I don't select it? Okay, they are too small. Okay, we have to increase the particle size. Okay, go back to our floating particles and at particle at initialize particle sprite size. Here we can increase the size. Let's just increase it tenfold. You click on save, go back. Do we already see some particles here? I would say it's still a little bit too small. And the particles now look a little bit too strong. You see that they are too wide for my taste. So next step is let's increase the size a little bit more and decrease the strong whiteness. We go back to the particle system. We wanted to increase the size a little bit more. 30 to 50. I felt that there are too few particles. Let's set it to 1000. And we want to decrease uh, the opacity. Here we can go to again to initialize particle and here at color, we just have to change the alpha value. Let's set it to 0.3. You already see that it's less strong in the preview. Let's hit save and take a look. Yeah, it's, it's okay now. So let's select the floating particle system to just check again. And we see that many particles are quite far away. So let's just decrease the size of this particle system a little bit. Let's make it to 200. Oh yes, much better. I feel they're still too strong. Let's decrease the alpha again, 0.1, save. Okay, I feel it's much better, but I now feel that the particles are basically not moving at all. You see that they're basically standing still. Let's go here, go to curl noise force and increase the curl noise force a little bit and decrease the noise frequency. Okay, now I think it's better. Let's make it a little bit brighter. Okay, now we have floaters in the air. We have our swarm swarming around. We have the light, it's fine. We have the shadow and we have the additional light here. Okay, this was the first video. We learned how to create the Niagara system and how to set up this foggy scene. In the next video, we will learn how to create a short movie sequence with the sequencer and how to set up the camera so it looks in a way cinematic. I hope you liked this tutorial. Feel free to like and subscribe. If you have recommendations for improvement, just say so. If you have questions, just ask them in the comments. Okay, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.